This time on Graveyard Cars, Will lays out his first rally red on a 1970 Cuda. Mark gets a visit from an instrument specialist. The ghouls discover what remains of the mythic Phoenix Cuda after it returns from the dipper. Look at those floors. And Dougie is sent on a special assignment to take a massive dump. The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life, are coming back to life. Self-proclaimed Mopar master Mark Warman and his protege painter Will Scott get paid to bring Mopar muscle cars back from the dead. They work with Mark's daughter Alyssa and his cousin Dougie. They're willing to travel anywhere to retrieve a customer's car, detailing how it lived its life and how it died. After that, they bring it back to make it look just like it did the day it was born. Dougie and Ezra load up the disassembled and burnt up body of the Phoenix Cuda. This one of 48 1971 Hemi Cuda is headed off to the Metal Dipper, while Mark and the ghouls eagerly await its return, hoping, along with the owner, that the car won't be worse than anticipated. Checking the lot, see how things looked. Uh huh. And I walked out here and I saw the, the recycling hanging <laughs> all over the ground and like 20 feet in the air and all that stuff. So I was just wondering why this is. Well, it might have been the wind. Could have been the wind, sure. Uh huh. Because sure. I had it stacked up really tall. Why do you have it stacked up so tall? Well, because it's full. <laughs> I know it's. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we forget the question for okay. a second? Why don't we just go to the final round? All you have to answer here. Is yes or no? Why? That's not one of the options. Oh. Will you bring the PJ trailer around and empty all of the cardboard that is strewn about the ground uh -huh. and above the brim of the recycling bin? Put it all in that trailer for me. Will you do that, yes or no? In the PJ trailer? It's not one of the options. Did you not see my cousin Vinny once again? That was a good movie. You are now in contempt. I can't. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drive you around to get the trailer. We're not gonna care about that right now. The PJ trailer? It's always good to visit with you. Thank, thank you, you so Mark. much for everything. Thank you, no, Mark. Thank you. We sprayed our 1970 Cuda. I uh, did it at the Rally Red. It's the first time I've done this color. When I came back to the shop, we'd already had one here that had been done already. So I'm excited to do this color for the first time. So the, the whole process, it covers fast. Uh, four coats of that single stage make, goes really quick. Car came out beautiful. That leaves the cut and buff left, and they'll have to undercoat the bottom of it. Then I can get over to Justin, put a few things on it, and then it'll be ready for assembly. Being a man of both action and delegation, Dougie enlists the production crew to help him load up the cardboard in his new dump trailer. That is going to need a hand, Doug. Yeah, I think so. Got quite a mess here, don't we? Well, I guess Mark says we can use this nice new PJ trailer for this mess, right? You got elected to help me clean this up? Yeah. I'm sorry. Work of a producer's never done, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Mike Mancini from Instrument Specialties pays Mark a visit. My name is Mike Mancini. I own Instrument Specialties, which is a dashboard restoration company. And I also own a, a restoration shop, American Muscle Car Restorations. And we do all of Mark's dashboards uh, for quite a few years now. I opened Instrument Specialties in 2007, and uh, I opened the full restoration shop in 2010. So we usually have about 18 to 20 cars going at any one time. So we stay quite busy with that. And the dashboards, we usually have five to 600 jobs going at any one time. This is more an idea of how all the back measurements go together. We're not yep. really using anything off of it. It helps you with all that hard to find stuff. Now, what's the story with this car? How, how come it? Well, this car, the, we use the front clip off of this car for the General Lee. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a nice clip, but his, the car that, the, the guy that owns this, that owns a 70 Super B446 pack, four speed, super track pack, plum crazy car, nice car. But the front end is in pretty good shape. A little bit of rust in the rails, which are very easily repairable. It's yeah. just like battery. Uh, but the back's real rotten. Yeah. So this is gonna be great stuff for the back, but he didn't really need the front end structure, so I gotcha. touched him out of that for yeah. the car. Yeah. But that's all that's doing right now. Otherwise, yeah, if that was mine, we probably would have cut it open and put all the pieces on this and been done a month ago. Oh yeah. That's a 70 Hemi Cuda that Tony, your buddy, Tony. Tony D'Agostino. Yeah. Yeah, he's friends with Tony. He's good buddies yeah, with Tony D'Agostino. Good old Tony. Well, I've known Tony for quite a number of years, and uh, back when I first opened my shop, he uh, was one of the very first jobs we did. We restored his 69 Daytona for him, and it was a lot of fun. It has two OE Gold Awards, and it's been featured in numerous magazines. It went to the Mopar Nationals. That was one of the big shows that we had it at. It's been all over the place. The Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, it won Best of Show there, Concours Gold Awards. So he's, uh, he's pretty happy with the, with the results, I suppose. Yeah, you gotta love Tony. <laughs> so whenever you see him, is he, is he eating a, a sandwich? <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> You're invoking your Fifth Amendment. I am. I, yes, I'm <laughs> privilege. Okay. I'm pleading the Fifth. <laughs> so there you go, Tony. Nobody took a shot. <laughs> That's our '69 and a half Super B, finally in pre-paint, which is an awesome thing. So on your jam work, what are you doing on your jams? Do you on a metallic car? We're painting everything at once. You are. Yep. So are the doors on? The doors are on. Yep. And you go in there like the factory did and yep. do the jam. Yep. Oh, we've never yep. tried that. Yep. Unfortunately, my guy isn't that skilled. Oh. No, 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 no. I wasn't, what I was meaning, you remember the old days down on Main Street when I was working down there? Before you even, <laughs> with that other guy, Bill. No, that was a guy before you years ago. Like before you were born or whatever. Yeah, he couldn't do that. He will could do it. Did you hear what he was saying? No, I didn't. When he, when he paints the cars, they paint them with the door, they jam them and do the doors and everything at the same time. And we've done that in the past, especially on metallic. No, I, I wasn't saying, no, no, I wasn't saying you couldn't. <laughs> I was just saying you do a great job. So sorry. Sorry I said you do a good job. Jeez. <laughs> Painters are sensitive because of all the fumes and everything. <laughs> all the fumes? Yeah, it gets to them, makes them wow, a little punchy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw him get in the trunk of his car and try to drive it the other day because he was loopy from the really? fumes. So I let him out of the trunk and said, dude, you're in the trunk. I know that. Anywho, back to where oh, we were at. Boy. So I assume you have fun at your shop. Oh, we have a blast every day. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. If you get the right team together that get your sense of humor and they like what they do, it's not a bad thing to do for a living. It's pretty oh, cool. Absolutely. Anyway, want to take a look outside? Yeah. All right. I like the shop. It's uh, clean, well-organized. He's got a lot of things going on. I had an opportunity to meet quite a few of the guys that work here and everyone seems uh, really enthusiastic and that's important. The cut and buff is all complete on our 1970 Rally Red Cuda. 
I've rolled it outside where I'll get it all pressure washed before we go ahead with the undercoating and blacking out the tail light panel. So it's sitting out there right now. We got a brand new Aladdin pressure washer. Get it unboxed, see what kind of cool features it has. One of the better features it does have is you don't have to plug it in. So you're able, it runs on a car battery, it starts up like a car. Uh, it's got a lot more power than our last one. So the old Aladdin pressure washer that we had, one of the great features about it is on the wand you could turn down the pressure. So when I was trying to fill the wash bucket, I'm looking and I realized it does not have that. So maybe the system has it and we haven't found it yet because it is new and nobody's used it. So you can see where that could be a problem when you're trying to fill a wash bucket and it comes out at like 200 miles an hour. So the car's washed, I'm gonna get it in the booth and on my downtime, I'm gonna go back out there and research if we can turn that pressure down a little bit. If not, I'm just gonna take the old wand off the old pressure washer and put it on the new one. Um, but overall, it's still a great piece of equipment. Car's all pressure washed beautiful and came out great. <laughs> uh, we just got our uh, Shelter Logic put up out here a few, few weeks ago. I'm most impressed with all the, the field of cars outside. It's just incredible that uh, the amount of work that he has lined up. This is a 70 GTX six barrel four speed Dana numbers car. Well, Dana 354, I should say. They're all Dana. And stacked up like cordwood. It is. It is. I have to start subletting back to him. Yeah, there you go. But you're backed up too, right? Yeah. I mean, you're busy. Yeah. 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 You don't even have a show. I know. I don't have a show. How many How many restorations are you getting? Six, eight, ten more out of year restorations? Yeah, I'd say probably six to eight out a year as far as completing them. Because we already, we kind of always have the show circuit cars pre selected, and so those are the main focus and we work everything else in around that. And then you've got really good customers that uh, you don't want to disappoint either, so you just do what you have to do yeah, to yeah, make it yeah. happen. It's constant juggling, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Someday I'll have you build me a car. Oh, I'll be yeah. happy to. I, I should do that. <laughs> and you probably do it for free because obviously good exposure on the show. I'd make you a good deal. A really, really yeah, good deal. really good deal. 70 burn orange charger, 383 two barrel. Two barrel? FK5 burn orange, white top, burn orange interior, console shift. 383 non-air. Why do you want that? Non-500. But what's the reason Power behind that kind of car? That's my car. Oh. When I was a kid, that was my first Mopar. Someday yeah. I'll do that car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, someday I will. Yep, and at the rate I'm going, I'll never be able to do it, so I may just have to take him up on the subway. Well, that's a cool story. And you guys heard it here. He was, you didn't hear it because his microphone dropped out, but he was saying he wouldn't charge me, so. <laughs> <laughs> With a massive pile of cardboard successfully loaded up in the new dump trailer, Dougie hauls this receptacle of recyclables to the dump. Stay tuned. Mark does a deep dive on the 1 of 48, 1971 Hemi Phoenix Cuda, incinerated in a massive garage fire where the owner and his friend barely escaped with their lives. This Cuda returns from the dipper, and the ghouls gather to find out what remains of this legendary Mopar. In 1971, Stairway to Heaven played live for the first time. Frazier defeated Ali in the fight of the century, and Plymouth revealed some stunning changes to its iconic roadrunner, like this one, awaiting its own restoration. This pace-setting mid-sized high-performance car came standard with a 383 four-barrel V8, but the 446-barrel and 426 Hemi were available options. Plymouth aimed for aerodynamics, rounding out the body and bumper 
bumpers. Even the side markers were given a flush design, and door handles were recessed, all contributing to less drag and more speed. Plymouth also added a new grille, new rally instrument cluster with wood grain trim, and a new steering wheel, making this 1971 Roadrunner our Corpse of the Week. So Mike's been out now for most of the day. We've been, had a great time walking around talking about cars. Yeah. Do you have a favorite car out in the graveyard? Uh, I think my favorite is, I'm trying to think. There's so many. I, Everyone's a six packer. Yeah, I know, I know. it throws you off. I think I like the six pack Cuda, even though it belongs to Goldberg. Thank you. Yeah, that's a cool one. Well, I'm sure he'd probably sell it for three times what he paid for it because he'd put his initials on the dash. Yeah, that's right, I said it, Bill. <laughs> You're in San Diego, I'm in Oregon. If I had even the inkling you were heading up here, I'd be gone. <laughs> You're a big guy. Sounds like a challenge. Oh, him, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been training this stuff for if the day ever comes. I, you know, if I had to lock horns with him or something, I could do that. But yeah, it's probably best for him that we don't. That's not the point. <laughs> point is, the brand new, freshly restored instrument panel from your company, Instrument yes. Specialties showed up for our 69 GTX. And it's ironic because he showed up this morning and this showed up about 20 minutes ago when we were out in the yard. So I thought, why not bring him in here, make him face the music, right? If it's not perfect, he can see that right here in front of maybe, maybe two or three million people. I'm sure it's gonna be perfect. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm sure this is too. <laughs> but let's get the dash out and just see how, did, how good you did here. Would you Would you like to Absolutely, uh, go yeah. ahead? I, I think it's screwed down oh. still. What's that say up there in the corner? I can't make it out. Instrument, Instrument specialty. specialty. Okay. okay, first off, nice packaging. Oh. Under hood AC ducting. Yes. Is that the trunk key in there? Oh yeah, it's all your keys. Because we had to send you those. Yep. This is the engine side tack harness. Right. And then we've got some clips in there for the uh, heater box. Beautiful. For you. This is a hard dash to do for a multitude of reasons. This looks great, let's do it. And... Well, that is absolutely stunning as always. Oh, thank you. My gosh. So are you replating all these? These aren't something you just pick up the phone and call and order new ones, are these? Those are originals we've replated. You've redone the yeah. plastic chromium yeah. on it. Same thing for the knob? Yep. All of them? Yep. And the registers? All that's, those are the originals that we completely disassembled, re chromed detailed, and put back together. This is gorgeous. And what about the lighter? Is that an NOS? Is that a recondition? That's the original, and then this is an NOS element. That's insanity. And so tell me about the Lucite panels. I mean, again, those look that, like new, and those are impossible. Well, those are the most difficult pieces on this dash to deal with. Fortunately, the pieces that we ended up coming up with, the ones from you and the, the radio bezel that I, I replaced, it didn't need really much restoration work to the wood grain or the back painting. We basically just wet sanded and polished the faces of them so they look nice and shiny and new. But that's all the original chrome striping Jeez. and everything. That's really amazing. Look at that. Now here's where it gets tricky. You've got the N85 factory tachometer in there, also known as the postage stamp. Correct. I'm assuming this is a new reproduction that you bolted in there? No, that's a complete original core that we restored and rebuilt. That's what I'm talking about. Tell me about the lettering. Tell me about the lettering that's on this lens and the highlight paint, the white, basically, that is on the tachometer, the speedometer, the temperature, the fuel and the amp gauge. Okay, so How as, do you do that? As far as the lens goes, that's one of the unique items for a GTX. It's got the 150 mile an hour speedometer, right. and it's got that, that 150 lens. That's the original lens that we completely buffed you and did. detailed. Yep. That's it. Yep. So you didn't have to do the white lettering again? We didn't because it was, it was in good condition. So good. once you, it looks dingy, but once you wash it, wet sand it, buff it. All it, of a sudden it comes to yeah, life, I know that, yeah, yeah. This uh, Lucite panel over here, that's part of the original stuff we sent you? Yep. Well, you did a remarkable job. The AC registers, I thought for sure, 
when I first peeked, that those were going to be new reproductions, yeah, and yeah. you're telling me those are the originals. Nope. I, now that I look, they kind of, they do because you know these are real sloppy. Yeah. From this knob over the relay rod all the way yeah. over to the little vents, yeah. and that very much original. Now these are the original pads. Original pads, which yeah. are impossible to find really good ones, yeah. or improbable to find yeah. them. And these actually fit really nice, which they very rarely ever yep. do. Yeah. So. And those aren't my original ones because maybe the glove box is, but I had to send you. The glove box, the original, but this was replaced and we... Because we went, we converted the car from a non-air conditioning car to an air conditioning car, so that was different. That's right, yeah. yep. But we re-dyed the pads and, you know, they look... Absolutely. And we beautiful. matched the color, we matched the dye to the, the back side of this original. Yeah. So we had... Right, that so, trick. Like yep. the bottom side of a deck lid. Yep. It's the best. Hard to argue with that color. That's right. When it hasn't seen the sun in 50 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Let me just take a quick look at the back side. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everything back here looks exactly as I would expect it to. Now, is this a, a new wiring harness? That's a or? brand new wiring it harness. It is. Yes. Okay. Constant voltage regulators that go bad after 50 years. Are you just taking those apart and cleaning them up, and testing them, putting them back together, or how are you doing those? We're converting them to solid state. So we use the original can. We take it all apart oh, and okay. we retrofit all solid state components inside so then you don't have that pulsating cycle time that the originals had and it puts out a constant voltage and it will resist some surges. So if it's constant, it's not the nine volts then? It's, no, it's putting about, about six volts. And it's all the time? Yep. Okay, I got you. Yep. I got you. Circuit board, just re yep, cleaned it that's up the original reason. circuit board. The pins always loosen up so we solder the pins to make sure that they're nice and tight. They do. Yep. What's going on there? Actually, that's a, um, a lot of times when you take these dashboards apart, you'll find the original assembly person's initials or name written on out the card, on, on, the on, on the glove box. Yep. So we found, this one appears to be KJ. We found that on the original glove box liner and we duplicated it exactly on this one. So you've one. also probably seen KJ before. We, we have seen it before, yes. That's their signature. Yep. Like, that's their Rembrandt. That's right. So if something didn't work from the factory, you could chase this person down. And I think so, and that might, that might have been part of it. They had to put their name on it, so if it got accountability, if it failed the test later down the line, maybe that was trouble. a factory thing, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah Beautiful be, work, my great. friend. Thank you. I got Absolutely a great crew. Gorgeous. We got a great crew that. Yeah, that you do. You're it. lucky. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and that's not easy. It's, no. it, you go through a lot of people trying to get the right guys to work with you, and you have to have patience, especially on stuff this yeah. minute and detailed. And it's it's a lot of intricate work. Absolutely, and we're just fortunate to have a great great group of guys that love doing it. So what do you think? Uh, a good time? Yeah, I had a great time. Yeah, really appreciate it. I know you got a lot of Mopars at your shop, but it's got to be fun to come out and see other people's misery. I, <laughs> you know what it's like, right? Yeah, absolutely. I <laughs> definitely seven. I definitely feel the pain. Do you but think it, about it all night too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shop owners they don't realize it. Yeah. Out there at home they think everything's just peaches and cream, but. There's a lot of stress on you. A lot of people's dreams are sitting here. A lot of cash is. sitting here. Yeah. It's a lot of responsibility, but would you do anything different? No, not at all. No, this is it's a told. dream job. All right, buddy. Uh, Thank you very much. And um, I'll give you a call when, uh, when we get that dash in, let you know everything's working. Yeah, send me a picture. All right, all right see you, thanks. buddy. We learned in our Corpse of the Week that the 1971 Roadrunner came standard with a new grille, new rally instrument cluster with wood grain trim, and a new steering wheel. Which other car in the satellite lineup came standard with a rally instrument cluster? The GTX, the Sebring Plus, the Satellite Regent. Think you know? Find out after the break. The 1971 Roadrunner came standard with a rally instrument cluster. Which other car in the satellite lineup came standard with a rally instrument cluster? Well, we pulled a fast one. All of these cars came standard with the rally instrument cluster. The Sebring and Satellite Custom came with the standard wood-trimmed instrument panel, while the Satellite Sedan and Coupe got the standard panel with silver argent. With the Phoenix Cuda back from the dipper, the ghouls gather to assess the damage. Okay, how do we want to do this, Big Bo? 
One in the front, one in the back type thing. Come on in, guys. Give me a hand. All right, Douglas. Yeah. Oh. Boy, so, oh, so far, so good. Oh my gosh, if this is what I think, we just jumped ahead six months. Look at those floors. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is a miracle. Look at that, that's better than any car we've done yet. <laughs> we haven't done a car that didn't have something wrong with the floors. I know. It's hard to believe. The wheelhouses, beautiful. Quarter inner structure. Got the one header we knew about. This, all good. Got a little warm up here, but that's the original cow. We'll just have to float that. Numbers look good over there. Uh, yep. Got a, got a 1B. Something, 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 yep. something, something. Should be right here too, right? Oh. Yeah. Yep. Wow. <laughs> look at the aprons, they're beautiful. <laughs> just a little patch right there. A little chrome trim there, huh? Right wow. Should be able to polish that up. Wow. Oh, nice. That is absolutely beautiful. Very minor, very minor. The rails are gorgeous. That's, that's the best. That's that great, the, huh? That's absolutely awesome. I'm absolutely amazed. Somebody already put a floor in to see how ugly that is. Oh. So we'll do a trunk floor, and we'll have to do trunk floor extensions in the quarters because they're warped. But just little sections of the wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. S small section of the Dutchman. Even the trough is good. See how in 71 they went to the studs uh -huh. for the clips instead of the screws like the 70s use? 71 they did that. Absolutely. Button. That is gorgeous. He is going to be so thrilled. He is going to be one excited cat. So, I mean, other than a pair of quarters and a trunk floor and extensions, and all of a sudden it's over to the mudroom with a couple patches. Oh man, he's gonna be one excited cat when we get showing that. That is awesome. So have you seen one come out like that before? That clean it, from us? It, no, th this one is amazingly clean. <laughs> that is the best job, thank you so much. This guy's gonna be thrilled. You're gonna be superhero to him. Yeah, he should be really He's gonna call happy. you Super Bowl <laughs> yeah. from now on. Yeah, he should be pretty tickled. I'm gonna get it inside and uh, get it uh, underneath the lights so we can get some good pictures of it and start rocking. Now that we can check off the Phoenix Cuda's post-dip assessment, it's time to roll it in the shop to go over Mark's plan of attack. So we just got back to 71 Cuda. This is our Phoenix Rising from the Ashes Cuda. It's a 71 426 Hemi automatic. So what I'm about to do on the car in the way of inspecting it, I'm, I'm looking for a few things. One is I gotta tell the body men what panels are getting repaired, what ones are getting replaced, what ones are getting patches on them, et cetera. So they have a build schedule to go off of. And the other thing is just to document the car and make sure that the panels that are on it, number one, started life on it, and if they didn't document that. Somebody comes along, not that Wendell will ever sell a car, but if somebody wanted to buy the car, you know, it's a half a million dollar car-ish when it's done. So they're gonna say, has it got the original aprons? Has it got the original frame rails? So I know what I'm gonna replace, or I will when I'm done, but I need to know what's also happened because the car isn't brand new, it's 50 years old. Still to come, Mark continues his deep dive to discover the secrets of the mythic Phoenix Cuda. But after its apparently triumphant return from the Dipper, the single best floors I have ever seen, will Mark uncover a sin from the Cuda's past restoration that would never have been revealed had this Phoenix not been baptized by fire? How can you tell if that's happened then? Well, somebody worth their salt can. So we just got back to 71 Cuda. This is our Phoenix Rising from the Ashes Cuda. It's a 71 426 Hemi automatic. I thought I'd show you that this is a numbers matching car, at least the body so far. The vehicle identification number on a 70 to 74 Plymouth Barracuda and Dodge Challenger is stamped in the upper cowl panel and on the radiator support. Now there's a lot of cars they build. They don't always go there. If you had a B body, there's one on the trunk lip and one on the radiator support. A bodies are even different from that. 
but it's the last eight characters of the vehicle identification number. But on these hidden body numbers, they flipped it. This actually reads B1. They put the assembly plant before the year, even though that's not how it appears in the vehicle identification number. So just watch for that. That's not a mistake. It's what they did. Okay, so I go up to the vehicle identification number. Here we've got the B, the 1, 396, 800. So I know that that's right. So when I circle that with blue, that means that matches the VIN number of the car. So over here on the course support, I have my B, my 1, 396, 800. So we know that's right. We know the body vehicle identification number, the hidden numbers, match the title to the car, match the block, match the transmission. This is all good stuff. You've got a car here that's a very expensive car. You've got a vehicle identification number that tells you it's real, and one here that tells you it's real. However, from right here, back could be anything in the world if you were a bad person. That means you could take the radiator support out of this car, this upper cowl panel out of this car, put it onto a really nice little car you bought, a little slant six, put those parts on that car and you could pass it off as a real one. That's called fraud. You should go to federal blank, blank, blank prison. How can you tell if that's happened then? Well, somebody worth their salt can. This is our cow panel. These are spot welds here, 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 here. I put a little mark there and so on and so forth. So I go to this cow panel and I put my marks where the spot welds are. Over here, we have a big weld. This is a, a, a regular MIG weld. Then I go in here and I start marking everywhere these spot welds were. These are all spot welds. People like to smooth these areas out when they restore the cars. Because this is ugly through here the way the factory did it. But the way the factory did it should be ugly. And you should not be able to tell that anybody's been there. So when we do our spot welds across there, we just leave them, we walk away. We don't use filler on it to smooth that area out. So for me, when I come out and I see all of the spot welds, I know that the upper cow panel started life on this car, at least adjacent to this firewall and adjacent to this side cow panel. But we still have a core support out here. Maybe they changed the core support. Well, the same things apply. You go through, mark off all of your spot welds, and there's a doozy of them. There's a ton. When I look at these, they're kind of sporadic. But when you go through and you look at this pattern right here that I've created, and you go over to another car that's original paint, never been touched, and it has the same pattern, and you know this was done by robots, you know it's the same thing. That's how you can tell that another panel's been replaced. So when I look at this upper radiator support and I see that the numbers are there, and then I walk over here and I look and I see all of the spot welds where they belong, I know that this started life on that. That panel started life on this apron by looking at our spot welds. That apron started life on that shock tower. That shock tower and apron combined started life on that firewall and that upper cow panel. That's how I know nobody's been on the front end of this car. So that only leaves the rest of the car. We learned in our Corpse of the Week that the 1971 Roadrunner came standard with a 383 four-barrel V8, although the 446 barrel and 426 Hemi were available options. True or false? The 1971 Roadrunner came standard with a three-speed manual transmission. Think you know? Find out after the break. The 71 Roadrunner's standard engine was a 383 four-barrel V8. And we made the claim that the 1971 Roadrunner came standard with a three-speed manual transmission. Were we telling the truth? Yes, we were. A three-speed torque flight automatic was also available, as was the epic four-speed manual with Hurst pistol grip shifter. Every single part on this car is an individual panel at some point in its life. Whether it's core support, an apron, a baffle, a lower core support, an inner fender, a firewall, upper cowl, side cowl, inner cowl, whatever it is, they're all individual parts that make up the car. The car is now a whole. So we gotta figure out what needs to be repaired and what needs to be replaced. So earlier I was looking at my radiator support. This radiator support is beautiful. It's not rusted or dented up here. It's in good shape. The side baffles are beautiful. They're straight up and down like they're supposed to be. This intersection here is really nice. A lot of times when they get popped in the nose at some point, this gets a little wadded up. Those are gorgeous. 
The only thing wrong is this lower radiator support. This little area right here that's just kind of buckled up a little bit, it needs to be repaired. I'm just gonna put a C for cleanup. That'll make it real simple for these guys. So the right hand inner fender or apron looks like it's in really nice shape. There is some damage from the heat. It's done some pitting in the metal, but that's not a patch replacement. That's just going to be a matter of repairing, resurfacing out the metal. So again, it's just gonna get a C on it. The frame rail right here, really nice shape. It just needs to be cleaned up. And the shock tower, same thing. This area where the battery box goes, this is really common to have the rust be much more shaped around the battery because of the acid. So what I'm gonna have them do is put a patch in here. I could put a whole inner fender, but all these beautiful spot welds that we talked about earlier, I like leaving those alone. We can graft in a small section of this battery tray area. You'll never know we were there. So I just do kind of a rough out. They'll, they'll make up their own mind when they do it, but they know when I circle this that I'm talking about trying to keep that repair fairly small. Now you put that piece in, cut this one out, make, use it to make the pattern for the other piece, put it back in. The two pieces of metal will butt up against each other. You metal finish this side, metal finish that side. Nobody knows you were ever there. This hole right here is what they call the shaker hole. So all Hemikudas got a shaker. Shakers had cables that were ran from the inside that said carb air. So when you pulled a little lever inside, you got cold air through the shaker. That's how they got from inside the car to outside. It's a pierced hole, not a drilled hole. This is a hard thing to fake too. So this is very important. We'd, even if we were replacing the cowl, I would wanna make sure we preserve everything important about that. From what I see on the actual firewall itself is really nice, just needs cleaned up. There's a few little areas on the upper cow panel. Again, this is our numbers matching cow panel. We don't want anybody to know we've ever been there. So if you have a rust hole like this one here, or like these little baby ones right here, this one's really crucial because it's so close to the numbers. We need a small weld up right there. Over here, we're eroding away a little bit. So again, this area and this windshield area right here are rusty, but not to the point where I'd ever want to start putting an upper cowl panel on it. But all of these are patch repair. I, got, I gotta say, the single best floors I have ever seen in my entire life, except on a brand new car that's never seen the road. The under seat pan right here, again, looks really nice and solid. So all this needs is cleaned up too. That's the first car, period, bar none, that didn't need at least a section of a floor. The roof, obviously garbage, the whole roof is caved in. So another interesting thing, I can already tell that for some reason this wheelhouse has been replaced, is if you look at these blob welds, those are not supposed to be there. This inner wheelhouse is spot welded to this under seat pan and the trunk pan. So I know that we've got to replace that wheelhouse with a correct new one and spot weld it back in so there's none of this evidence here. So on the quarter panels, obviously, we're gonna be replacing not only quarter panels, most of the sheet metal. But here's something interesting. If you look at this quarter panel through here, I don't believe the reason you can see through it is all from the fire. I think it probably had filler put over rust way back in the day when somebody restored I can't say that for sure, but that's my hunch. And, and while you're looking at this, you can see certainly it's just warped like crazy. It, see all that ripple through there? I'm gonna shut the lights out in here and I'm gonna backlight that and you'll be able to see exactly how bad that is and somebody mudded over it. See, now this tells all. That's, that not only shows the large holes that are here, but even the little microscopic ones. So the paint's doing the same thing butchers will do. They'll have something that has holes in it. It's not a great big hole you can stick your head through. It's a lot of pepper holes like this, and they'll just smear mud all over the outside of it and call it good. And I don't think you see it as much today as you did years ago, but that's a great, there's a great visual example. That's what happens when metal deteriorates. It starts like that and it gets bigger and bigger until it looks like most of the cars out here on the lot. Okay, turn the lights on. This is replace. They already know that real well. So I look at this rear body panel and overall this is really nice. Most of the time, 
whether it was in a fire or not in a fire, they're rotted out. And they'll usually rot out right through this area here because this is where the license plate pocket seams and goes underneath the actual opening of the rear body panel. Stuff will collect in there and then this will rot out through here. So this rear body panel will not need to be replaced. However, there's a couple areas, like right through here, that I'll want repaired that hold the actual tail lights themselves. This is part of the quarter here, so this goes away when we do the quarter panel on it. This up here has some rust through it that's hard to see, but it's there. So we're gonna wanna put a small piece in here. This is kinda like the quarter panel. If you had a backlight on it right now, it'd look like Swiss cheese through there. I think that may very well be from the heat. This is the rear cross member here. This connects the two frame rails together and the pan intersects with it, the trunk pan and the trunk floor extensions intersect with the trunk floor. So this makes up part of the structural integrity of the rear body right here and it is beautiful. You look, there are no holes, no rust, it looks really great. This isn't rusted through or peppered like the other one, but if you look at the distortion in the metal, this is all from heat. That's what happens when metal gets hot and cools back down again. It stretches, it shrinks, it does all kinds of crazy stuff. So we will end up doing a quarter panel here too. I take a look underneath here. First thing is everything's clean because we haven't dipped. So it's a brand new, clean, beautiful metal. We knew the trunk floor had been replaced. We talked about it before. Here you can actually see it. So if you look here, you'll see this seam along here. That shows that at the time this trunk pan was replaced, they probably bought a two piece before they made available the one piece. Then over here is where they kind of made the mistake is it looks like they just overlapped it. They took this pan and they overlapped it over the original pan, which is not a good repair. It probably wouldn't fail, but it's not a very good repair. So now we know we have the trunk floor. This is the trunk floor extension. It starts here. This is the trunk pan. They spot weld together right here. It goes over and then it follows the quarter panel down. These always rust out. This doesn't surprise me at all because this is exactly where the tire would kick all the crap off the road up into and it would just sit up in there and stew and rust everything out. So we'll be doing a left trunk floor extension. I think what happened at some point looking at this car is it probably was in an accident. And in that accident, it destroyed the quarter panel to a point where it needed to be replaced. And it also damaged the inner and the outer wheelhouse. I think that they put the outer wheelhouse on as part of this quarter. They didn't separate them. They left the inner and the outer together in the middle, but then they broke it loose here where it meets the floor pan. That's why if you look here, all these holes that you see, those are all the original spot weld holes that held this inner wheelhouse to whatever car it came out of. This was a used quarter section. For a car that looked absolutely destroyed when it rolled out of that trailer and looked like it was gone, It'll be actually one of the nicest cars that we've ever put together from the standpoint of infrastructure pieces. The stuff that would really cost you money and time came out really nice. With the Phoenix Cuda in the metal shop, Will rolls his latest paint job into assembly. It's the first red one I've ever done. Oh, no way. Yeah. This color looks good on probably every car. This is the, the main color my dad always painted is Daytona's. You want it in the second stall here? Yeah, that works. Are right, you clear? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that looks great. It's nice to see a new car over here, especially a new color, isn't it? Oh yeah. It's a pretty straight car. Nice bright color. Yeah. And that's straight, that looks really good. Thank you. Can't wait to see this one done. Well, you have another car, and Thank hopefully you. in the next month, I will give you a Daytona, which I know you are Favorite anxiously car. waiting to do. Favorite car ever. I know, and you will have one in a month, my friend. Thank you, friend. Thank you.